Winter is now upon us and that can mean only one thing. The DNA Winter Series is back. For the eighth season of our flagship series, we will be going to a whole host of venues across the country, experiencing the highs and lows of cold water carp fishing. So sit back, grab yourself a cuppa and enjoy the ride. Welcome back to the first instalment of the winter series. Not as cold as what it normally is when we start these. Me and you started the first one last year, didn't we? We did, yeah. That, I seem to remember that was pretty chilly, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it was freezing. Just a bit. <laughs> but this time round, it's nice and warm, nice and mild, and we are at the iconic Blue Pool Lake, which is on the Burfield complex. Some of you may have heard of it, some of you may have not. If you haven't, where have you been the last 10 years? Because <laughs> this place has been well and truly put on the map. There's some lovely ones in here as yeah, well. Yeah, mate, it's some real belters, good healthy stock as well for the mm. size of lake that it is, isn't it? So. Yeah, so I've not been here for a few years. I used to fish it regularly, sort of once a year uh, for the past four years, which was about six years ago now. Yeah. But you do the similar thing, but more. Yeah, it's probably this time. probably around the time you probably stopped. I've started going with a bunch of my mates mm. and we go every year. So around this time of year, funny enough, this year we did our trip a month early. So I've been here only a few weeks ago. Right. Um, and it looks very similar to how it did then. Conditions nice. are the same. Um, the activity and where we've seen the fish this morning seem yeah. to be in the same kind of area. So. Yeah, so we've had a walk around this morning already. Yeah. Uh, sort of chosen our pegs. You're obviously going to go back in the swim that you did yeah. well from. Yeah, I think that's a, a good starting ago. point, isn't it? I'll, I'll start over in that swim over there on the other side of the lake. Yeah. Um, seems to be quite a consistent peg from the trips we do. Mm. Um, and there's another peg on this bank as well, isn't there? Yeah. So at least we're spreading ourselves. Yeah, I remember from back in the day when I used to fish here, that used to be quite a prolific peg. As you as you come in from the car park, it's your furthest one down in the corner on this bank. Don't know the peg numbers or anything, or ever they got No, there isn't anything so. on here, I don't think, but... Um, I'm sort of sent, like pretty much centre of the other side of the lake, really, yeah. aren't I? So. And I'm in one corner on this side of the bank. So, right, well, the light is always against you at this time of year, especially with the winter series. So we're definitely eager to get the rods out before it gets dark. Definitely. So I think it's time for us to make a move, yep. get into our swims and get set up for the evening. Yeah, let's do it. So in my swim down in the bottom corner here, there's obviously a new tree that's fallen in in front of me. So I've investigated that area, had a good marker about, lead about, deeper about. I've done it all basically. I want to put as much legwork in at the start of the trip so that you're not sort of having to make as much disturbance throughout the rest of the trip. So you can get everything done now really i.e. having a lead about, having a mark about, finding your spot straight away and doing as much as possible at the start then puts you in good stead for the rest of the session, I feel. Now, I've chucked up tight to that tree and that didn't really feel too great underneath there. There's quite a big bank of weed that sat under the tree and then sort of, I would say it's about a rod length, maybe two rod lengths, this side of it just on the sort of marginal shelf where it goes down there's a nice little gravel area there now it's not a big zone that i've got but there's a 
bit of gravel, which is the nice one, which I feel is going to be the left-hand rod that's the best rod of them. There's a tiny little silt strip, and then there's another tiny bit of gravel to the right-hand side of that. So I'm going to fish all three out there. It's in 11 and a half foot of water. So as you, you imagine, you look out towards the tree, sort of as the marginal shelf comes down, and right at the bottom there, that's a nice gravelly bit, and then middle rod and then right hand rod to the right hand side of that they're all 11 and a half foot and i feel that's the best zone that's the kill zone so what i've done is pop the marker float up out there gone round add a little go with the deeper sort of working out the area come back to the swim chucked a bare lead out there and made sure that it was absolutely perfect then clip the lead up to where I feel it was exactly falling, just behind the marker float. So obviously 11 and a half foot of water, you're gonna be quite some distance behind it. And then as it's fallen down, I've put it in the clip, gone round the wrap sticks and it's 14 and a tiny bit. And then brought the marker float down, clipped that back up, reeled that one in, it was exactly 14 and a quarter. So that is where I'm fishing or 14 and a little bit. We'll call it 14 and a quarter. Now I'm going to be fishing all three rods the same style as well. All on solid bags, all three of them. Solid bags is something that's been good for me the past sort of month or two. So that's what I'm going to fish this time around, especially on day ticket waters where you've got that tiny short rig. It's very difficult for them to get away with. We'll talk more about that as the session goes on. So all I'm doing now is getting the third and final rod ready, which is that little beauty there and it's basically fished on a dumbbell pb wafter oh there's a left hand has just bleeped and i've tipped it off with some maggots maggots this time of year you know can be absolute winner for you so that's what i'm going in with and that's just going to be fished in amongst the bag crayfish mini mix I've gone around there already and put bait out got a little bit of a sort of winter mix on the go it's a lot of crushed s7 some 12 mil S7, 8 mil S7, a few pellets in there, and that's been soaking in hydro spod syrup for the past few days. So that's my tactics, that's what I'm going in with, all three on solid bags, and with that little bit of winter mix over the top. Right, well that's the three rods now out. Um, what I've done is gone in with the same tactics that I did on a trip that I had a social, basically I was here with a few mates a few weeks back, it's a trip that we do every year, um, and I drew this swim, had a really good trip. So first port of call, as Mozza said earlier, is I'm gonna go straight back in this swim where I left off. There's already been some activity in the area. So what I've done, the first rod went straight down my right hand margin. There's two big sort of overhanging, overslung trees that go right in that margin there and you can basically use a baiting pole and tuck one right up under it. Uh, so that's that one done. And then the other two are on a spot where I caught fish from last time. Um, just two rods nice and tight on a spot, a little bit of bait over the top. I've only gone in with sort of five or six spots for now, um, which is what I learned on my last trip. I went in with a bit too much bait on the first night, so I've scaled that right back this time around to see if I can get a quicker bite. And that's it now, so I can sit on my hands now, I can wait a little bit. I mean, it's what, I think it's nearly three o'clock now, so it's mad how quick that time goes on that first day. So we're allowed in the gates from 10.30 when you book this place. And by the time you're sorting all your gear out, obviously your cameramen are sort of walking around, that kind of thing. Um, it's mad how, how quick that day goes. So I'm all settled now. I'm gonna tidy up some of the bits, probably get the brolly up, just get myself nice and comfy. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can nick our first bite on day one. That'd be a lovely start. So. Um, yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll see how things go. Well, I was just sat here talking to Wally, watching them sheet up over where I dropped that rod down the right hand margin. I was like, mate, that thing's going, that thing's gonna go and they're sheeting up on it. Sure enough, I'm stood there watching it. Bobbin's just cracked up, slack them right off. Got first one in the bag. 
I love it when that happens. You see him sheeting up on your spot and you sort of know it's going to happen. Proper rush. Oh, that was just a little PB wafter. A little bit of a mix that I sort of made up a few days ago in preparation for the trip. So I'm sure we'll uh, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail. But uh, for now I've got to try and stop this fish getting under that tree. <laughs> Loads of overhangs in this lake. It's like real snaggy in areas. Lovely for sort of margin fishing, that kind of thing. But you do have to be careful when you're playing them in the edge. They're real hard fighters. One thing I have actually done on this trip, which caused me an issue, quite oh, crikey, on my last trip, is I've actually put back lids on. I don't, it's not something I normally use, but I had two occasions on my last trip where um, I actually suffered a hook pull because I got wiped out by my other lines and it just caused a bit of havoc in this swim. So now I can sort of comfortably play the fish in the edge here. My lines are pinned down. I ain't got to worry about it now, which is great. See what I mean? These things, because you've got such deep margins down here, they're absolutely beast you. It's pretty much ready, I think. Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh nearly. Come on, mate. There he goes. I think he's only a little fella. But that is. A 2022 winter series off the mark. Happy days, get in there. Yeah, he's probably enough a double, I reckon. Cracking start, nice to get one on the first day, wicked. that is a very good start to this year's winter series. I reckon he's probably touching close to 20 pound, uh, but the rods have only been out a couple of hours. And uh, yeah, as I said before, seeing him sheeting up on that spot, knowing you're gonna get a bite and this early on as well. I was confident of a bite early on anyway. This happened to me a few weeks back on our last trip. But yeah, wicked, 20 pounder. So uh, yeah, the first of many, hopefully. I'm gonna get this one back. I've got just enough light left so I can ship another one out onto that spot again ready for the evening and I reckon there's a chance of one more before bedtime. So yeah, happy, happy days. Right, let's get it back, get the rod back out. Oh, you had a nice start. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, was it? Yeah. I think no, it'd only been out a couple of hours. Yeah, that um, will do. Yeah, well done. Yeah, that right margin just shit one down there like I'd done before anyway. And um, I stood there with Ollie, funny enough, and I was like, mate, get your camera ready. That thing's going to go. And they were sheeting right up on the edge of this tree, mm. right on where I put the rig. And I was like thinking, it's going to go, it's going to go. And then Ollie got the camera out, got some footage of it, um, like all the fizzers. And I was just, we were funny enough looking at the rod, I was like, that thing is going to go. And sure enough, like it, literally yeah, as we were yeah. saying, it just went whack <laughs> and then slackened right off. And I thought oh, I've been done. And then five seconds later, it come back up again. And yeah, it was on. So oh, yeah, lovely. Good nearly skills. 20 pounds. So yeah, it was all right. Yeah, that will do. Yeah, that's probably one of the fastest winter series bites we've ever yeah, had. I think, I thinking about it, I think you're right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, very nice. Well, yeah, good it carries skills. On. Yeah, well, we've heard a couple of show as well. Yeah. Sort of in between me and you. Yeah, they're quite spread out, um, aren't they? Yeah, no, I've heard a couple a little bit further over. Yeah. I've had the odd liner on the left hand rod, which I think is going to be my money spot in all fairness is my left hand. Yeah, hour. yeah, a bit closer on that share. Mm. Um, from past experience, that seems to be a bit more consistent yeah. on, the, on the left, like the left hand rod. The others do bites, yeah. but the nearer you are on that side, I think seems to be the one. Yeah, cool, yeah, it's good to hear. So fingers oh, yeah. crossed something happens tonight. We've, yeah, we've had a little bit of rain as it's got dark. Yeah. And um, and yeah, that that wind was cold though, wasn't it? Yeah, I think you got the brunt of it more than I did. Mm. We were right over there off the back of it. But, yeah, um, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was absolutely freezing, which hence, the hoodie was on and I ended up cowering over the stove for a little bit as I do throughout all these winter series. But 
yeah, definitely feeling feeling like something may yeah. happen. This I season. think now we've had a bite today on the first day, mm. pressure's off a little bit then, isn't it? You yeah, relax yeah, a little bit, sure, think, here yeah. we go, we've got plenty of time ahead of us now to sort of string something together. So, yeah, yeah I feel confident. Yeah, well, fingers crossed something happens for either one of us tonight. Yeah, fingers crossed, mate. Give us a shout if you get one anyway. Yeah, we'll do. Nice one. Morning, good afternoon, good night. I don't know what one it is. All I know is one minute I was asleep, next minute I've got an arced rod in my hand. So yeah, left hander, the one that I felt most confident on, the one that's the closest to that ledge has busted off. Yeah, it does feel a good fish as well well they always do when they're so far out um bit of a strange bite just sort of two bleeps and then that was about it but it was enough to get me out of bed and drop back a little bit and i thought well, there's definitely something on the end there luckily kited over both of the other two rods and he's out to the right hand side of the swim in the open water at the minute so if he stays out there because it's not the easiest of casts to get all three rods back out on the spot so fingers crossed we can keep him away from the other two rods and get this one in i won't re-chuck this rod because we've still got two other rods fishing the same area so so we can get him in and not wipe any other rods out <laughs> It does feel a bit of fish though, definitely. Cool, there he is. Long one, isn't he? Up. <laughs> Lovely start. there was a perfect start then this could quite possibly be it all 36 pounds of him of blue pool monster ah oh, over the moon with that <laughs> oh wicked he's a lot bigger than i thought he was going to be me and video looking at him like is it a 30 he most definitely is and a mid 30 all that ah oh, Amazing, big old tail on him, huge pecs on him as well. And a bloody awesome carp indeed. So I'm so glad that I've got that spot right. All that effort of going round there and making sure that the spot is right is most definitely worth it with this monster. Ah, oh, yes, wicked. Right, let's hope there's plenty more of these giants to come this trip for me and Ollie. Yes! <laughs> Wicked. Cool. Time to say goodbye to Mr. Chunk. That's what we'll call him. Oh yeah. Well then, Mr. Chunk. Have a look at that. Cool. <laughs> oh, I love that. That is a giant. Under the trees to sulk another day. Nice! 
<laughs> Whoa! Oh, nearly went in. <laughs> <laughs> well after a hectic day setting up camp then being dragged out of my pit to land that epic 36 pounder I drifted back off to sleep in no time at all I wasn't sure on the time but one of the remaining rods on the tree spot signalled another take this one was having none of it and took plenty of line before I could get it under control There we go. <laughs> oh, she finally gave up and registered a healthy £26.8. <clears throat> it's bigger than we thought. After lifting her for the cameras, I decided not to put the rod back out. I was fishing free tight onto the spot and I still had one out there till the morning. So I decided not to reset the traps until daylight. It's been an hour or two since that 26 mirror. Seems like every time I drift off, the rod busts off. And I was a bit zombified, but clearly not complaining. All three rods had scored me a bite. All that time I'd spent at the start of the session ensuring the rigs were landing perfectly on that small area was well worth every second. Get this one in. Not putting the rods out, left no disturbance on the baited area and this final fish couldn't wipe any other rods out which can be a problem when fishing them so tight she looked like another good fish and a common too and he comes yes ah oh, lovely <laughs> one bites the pb We did the do on the mat and she behaved for the cameras. Wow, what a session this is turning out to be. First a 36, then a 26, and now this one, a 28 pound. So obviously all three rods going on that spot and uh, yeah, all that worthwhile earlier on, making sure that it was the spot and this is the reasons behind it all. At this stage, it wasn't long before daylight, so I wrapped the rods ready for the morning and got back in the pit for a bit of much needed sleep. What an incredible start to this session. Good morning from a very blurry eyed me. Now I didn't put the rods back out last night. Obviously the third one went, which was the last fish with that 28 pounder. And yeah, got me head down for a couple of hours. And as you can probably hear or tell that it is lashing down with rain. Not ideal. And I've still not got rods back out in the water. There's no way I'd be able to cast solid bags in this weather. So, yeah, it's a case of, do I chuck rigs out there that aren't solid bags, which would seem like madness to do in all, you know, I've had three bites from three big ones, really, you know, even a 26 pounds, a big cut. And yeah, it just doesn't feel right just to sort of chuck Ronnie's out there, something, you know, obviously other than a PVA bag. So. I'm going to wait for at least an hour or so. The, the weather app at the moment is saying that this is meant to calm down in about an hour. So I'm going to try and wake myself up a little bit more. Have a few more cups of tea. My missus has nipped me coffee. So I haven't even got any coffee at the moment. So it's teas only at the minute. And yeah, fingers crossed this weather just calms off a little bit. So it gives me the opportunity to chuck a solid bag out there because it ain't happening at the minute. No way. I wouldn't even get to the swim without it melting. So yeah, that's the state of play at the minute. Um, I'm probably going to put my waterproofs on and maybe go around and just top 
top the area up with a little bit more bait just to keep the spot going but at the minute I'm tactically resting the swim. Well, I'm absolutely soaked through, but I do not care. I was going to the toilet. Oh, I was going to the toilet around the other side, and uh, on my way back, Ollie was shouting at me. Well, um, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I was uh, putting it, well, to put it politely, I was answering the call of nature. <laughs> Making my way back round, Ollie's bivvied up in the same swim so he can sit on the rods. And I've heard him shouting on my way back, and we're into another fish. My middle rod had gone. And this was on the, in, on the end of it. <clears throat> As you can see, it's a horrendously bleak morning. Probably from about half past five this morning onwards, it's been absolutely tipping it down. This is like the lightest the rain's been all morning. I think it's probably about, I don't know what the time is now. Um, but yeah, a couple of liners in the night. Um, to be honest, I thought I would have got more bites. Um, knowing how this place has fished for me before, I thought not putting any more bait out, I probably would have been able to string a few bites together. And he just dried up. I had a savage liner probably about an hour after that last fish. And then everything stopped. So I sort of sat on my hands this morning because I know early mornings here are normally pretty good up until about 11-ish, which was doing well for us last time. And uh, this feels better fish actually, which is nice. On the bite, Ollie said that it absolutely melted and he's gone straight into a weed bed, which is sort of to the right of the area I'm fishing. And yeah, it's just down here now, but it's staying deep, which um, hopefully is a good sign. Led me a right merry dance. He's wiped out all three of my rods. He's caused absolute mayhem in the swim. I've had to cut one of the lines, get it all back in. Yeah, it's still on, yeah. It's just where that weed bed's on the line. And he's gone right round the other way. This ain't helping. <laughs> well, it wasn't very graceful, but it's in the net. What a palaver that was. So it's gone right, and where I've got this line to the right here under that tree, it's managed to get round that, pull the, the weed beds, drag that line in, and we've tried to loop all that round and then it's just buried itself deep and managed to pick up this other line as well. What a nightmare. But, that looks like the biggest fish for me so far, so. And I said to myself on the way here and the guys in the car park, I was like, do you know what, I'd really love to get a 30 pounder for the winter series. And uh, I've done it, 30 pound, 10 ounces. So yeah, I'm absolutely over the moon with that. Wicked, cool little mirror as well. So uh, yeah, he might have, um, it might have stressed me out a little bit with the lines and what have you, but all of that is irrelevant. Happy, happy days.
that is us fishing. So got all three rods back out onto the spot. It stopped raining now, so that's allowed me to get them PVA bags back out. They've got all three lines, tram lining out there to the area. And as I've just got mine in the water, Ollie's dragging one out of the water. So he's playing one at the minute from his open water rod. Fingers crossed he gets that one in. Well, the rods have only been out 20 minutes since we um, sorted out the rods after that 30 pounder. I'm hooked on a tree. Um, yeah, rain's eased up, looking lovely now. And the middle rods bust off, so yeah. Doing the same as all the others. Yeah. Should I do a mozza? Yes, get out there. Yeah, wicked. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Moz. Well, it's only been 20 minutes or so since I slipped back that 30 pounder and the rain's eased off and we've had another bite off that baited area. So I think now is probably as good a time as any to have a little look in more detail at the rigs that I've been using to catch these fish. So I'll get this one back and then we'll have a little look at those rigs. Well, we've just put back that, um, that mid-20 mirror just now, and I need to get the rod back out. So it's a good time as any to show you the rig that I've been catching on. It's really simple. Again, all my rigs and stuff that I use are always as simple as possible. I don't want to clutter anything with too much mess and metal work and all of that kind of thing. And all I've got here is just a, a very simple like blowback presentation. And all I've got there is just a size four curve shank hook with a rig ring at the bottom of the shank. Sometimes I use a bit of tubing, but on this occasion and on this lake, the rig ring seems to work for me. So, and all I'm putting on the end of that is I've got my pot of wafters that I take everywhere with me. What I do is I split up the different colors and I just have one tub with me. I think I've mentioned it in a previous video. Um, and I've got all my favorite colors. As you can tell, the yet lows, the PBs are getting a bit low. So I think I need to order a few more of them because that's what I'm catching them all on at the moment. Um, just out of personal choice, usually when I'm starting on a, on a venue, I'll go in with the three different colors. I'll have the pink, the white, and the, the yellow. Um, but on my recent session I had before, I had 16 bites and landed 14, all on yellow PV wafters. So, and that complements the bait that I'm putting out quite nicely, which we'll go into a bit later. So all I'm doing is literally just threading that onto the end of my rig. Um, I normally have a number of these tied up, ready to go. But rather than putting the bait stop on the end and just fishing it as it is, I am tipping it with a few maggots. And all I'm doing is just getting a little bit of my bait floss. If I could find my scissors, which I can't find my scissors. So yeah, anyway, when I find my scissors, I'm just threading the bait floss through the loop on the end of my hair. And then I'm just flossing on with a really fine baiting needle, probably like five or six maggots. And then I'll tie that off and that acts as my bait stop. Um, just gives it another little sort of natural element to the hook bait. And because I'm, I've got a very small amount of corn in the mix that I'm putting out, I think the yellow complements it nicely. Although you've got a bright colour out there, it's not a real standout fluoro, if you know what I mean. There's a little bit of colour on the, on the baited area. So that's pretty much it. Um, rig's probably about eight to nine, maybe about eight inches in length. Um, 
very supple, sort of soft coated braided material there. And I've got a little break in the braid just before the shrink tubing, or I've got a kicker on here, but it does the same kind of thing anyway. So it just gives that hook a little bit of movement. And that is basically, it couldn't be any simpler, um, just the way I like it. And yeah, I think this one's just about ready to go out. Now that fish did wipe out that other rod a little bit. So I'm gonna wind that one in, just check the hook bait's okay on that one. And then both of those will go straight back out, a few more spots over the top. So yeah, let's find these lost scissors, shall we? Oh. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm absolutely <laughs> battered. I was going to say you look it, but I probably shouldn't. That would be a bit unfair. But um, It would be unfair. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's You been see the camera, man. Well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it has been a tiring one, isn't it? With the rain as well that we've oh, had, mate. it just makes everything that bit harder, doesn't it? It was sort of this time yesterday that I, I went to bed in the hope that I'd probably get a bite, you know, sort of one, two o'clock. But yeah. I think my first bite was about 11 which I think was your second yeah. bite. Seems about right. Yeah, and then I was up, and it, I'm buzzing then, you know, I've had a 36 yeah. pounder and I'm wired. like, well, yeah, 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 I've had a cup of tea and I'm like, oh, I've had That's a it. big one. And I then think I'm you and I were both up till about two-ish, weren't we? Yeah, I, I, and then and that was I turned my lights bite. off and then you had one. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, and then that was it. I then went to bed at that yeah, point. Yeah, and then I just carried on yeah, throughout the out. rest of the night. I saw the sun come up this morning and, and then it's the daytime then. Yeah. And, and I had no rods out. It's <laughs> lashing down with rain. I'm sat in my bivy, like contemplating yeah. my life. <laughs> it's yeah, it's not the one, especially you're, well, you're fishing solid bags as well, aren't yeah, you? So that just, ain't really the one for you. Yeah, I just couldn't get them back out. I could have chucked Ronnie's out there and but I just, I mean, you've had three bites off of a certain tactic. Changing yeah. it would seem yeah, like madness. Yeah, you're going to feel funny, aren't you? Swapping mm. it over to something yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I managed to get the rods back out, add that quick bite, but then nothing else. But you've no. had a few bites. Well, it, it did the same for me. So I, I was getting bites all morning, Ollie, leading Ollie, up to Ollie. that lunch. I had that 30 pounder, then I had a one just shy of 26 after that. Mm. But then after that, again, I got the rods back out, all fine thinking, here we go, another quick bite in yeah. half hour, and it just died off. You can see sort of patches of fizzers moving down the lake, like I really? said to you earlier, didn't I? Yeah. And they were sort of sitting over there, and I thought that was them moving. But then since then in the afternoon, I've had a couple of liners again, thinking, right. oh, maybe they're moving on. And there's been a couple showing in that vicinity between you As and me it. again. Yeah, which so was like, what I happened think, last night. I think night, what they've it? probably done is where we've smacked them in the first 24 hours, they've pushed off, mm. and now they're probably moving back in again. I've had a few hours grace, yeah, so you haven't yeah. had rods in, yeah. and they, they're starting to move back again. So I reckon... I don't think you yeah. can get much sleep again tonight. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm ready for bed, definitely. I need to get my head down, at least get a few hours kit. But yeah. if the rods kick back off tonight, then that's what we're yeah. here for. So. Yeah, exactly. It, you sort of have to embrace it, didn't you, with winter fishing? You expect it. You've got more hours of darkness. You mm. know you're going to get bites at night anyway. Yeah, so yeah, for sure. We can make up for it during the day, I guess. Yeah, man. Well, fingers crossed another big one turns up tonight. I that think that's what we're nice. hoping for now, isn't it? I think yeah. we've, had, we've had bites now. I think now we just want to try and get through and try and get something a little bit bigger. Well, you've had yeah. a mid-30 already. <laughs> <laughs> Greedy First son. bite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you want a bigger one. There's not that many bigger than that in here anyway. Um, Greedy but, angler. but yeah, exactly. You know, it, it would be nice to get a couple more thirty pounders, wouldn't it? Like yeah, definitely. Each at least. Oh we've yeah, got time yeah, for it. That. It's nice that we've both had a thirty pounder. Yeah, that exactly. Nice. And the stock of thirty pounders in here is mental. Like when we come on our socials, there's always a number of thirties that come is out, that? and they're all different ones as well. It's only occasionally we've had the same one like the year previous. Right. So a lot of them are like new ones. Oh, so that wow, means really? thirty you have you've had i look back at our photos of previous years none of us are caught here. oh really and we've been here i think five six times now right. and we normally catch see on bite. our socials that i used to have sort of nine years ago it, it was all 20 pounders back yeah. then so they're obviously now the 30 pounders yeah, that exactly. you boys are having so um but yeah there's a lot of mystery fish and stuff in it that crop up some of the fish that we've had like i had one that was 39.4 the other week and that was looked like it never been caught yeah and it was that was all wide a 35 before that and that was the biggest mirror we'd had up until then, right. like in all the previous trips, mm. 
And then right at the very end, I had that 39, and that's one of the big ones in here. So, yeah, mental. Yeah, there's, there's definitely Lovely. a few better ones to go for. Well, that fish is no down £40 pound right now, so fingers crossed you don't catch it, no, I do. No, well, yeah, I'd, I'd rather not catch it again. I'll let you have that one. There's a big comment I've got my arm in there anyway, yeah, so I wouldn't mind that one. What, perfect comment. Yeah, do you know what it is? It got fit in here last week. Yeah. Somebody had it on a solid bag in there. Well, I'm not tried. one for fishing the wrong ponds or anything in this yeah, area. Yeah, of course you're not. Yeah, that's it. Which one was it you were on? <laughs> well, let's not go into yeah, it. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's a story for another day. <laughs> one pound leathery one wicked mm -hmm. Well, good morning. Um, another slightly hectic night last night. At least I managed to get a bit of sleep in between the bites. First rod went at about 11 o'clock with that lovely levery one, 20 pounder. And then I left that rod in, same procedure as what I did the night before. And then I think it was the middle rod, it might've been the right hand rod busted off after that. And we got him about halfway in and as he breached the surface, he fell off. Oh, he's come ah. off. Got him. Yeah, first loss of the trip. And he did feel a better fish as well, that one. So I'm a little bit hurt still by that. Um, and then four o'clock this morning, the final rod was bleeping up and down. And there is a few crayfish in here. So I don't know whether it was them or just fish feeding on the spot. But yeah, I had a few liners off of that rod. And then I ended up just hitting one of them, but nothing was on the end. Lead was still on. So it was probably liners i would imagine from fish feeding around the area the rain was relentless all last night and this morning it didn't let up whatsoever so obviously pva bag fishing in that weather isn't ideal so i've left that i'd left the rods in and then once the rain fizzled out this morning i've managed to get two rods back out onto the spot and uh yeah i'm just putting the third one together now so what we'll do is probably show you a little bit more in detail the rig that i've been using because it's slightly different you know sort of set up to your usual pva bag rig and obviously what bags i'm using over the top of that bait we put out at the start of the session this is the rig itself now this was a rig that i first used a couple of months back when i was fishing at sandhurst lake and the first time i used it 
uh, managed a brace of 40s on this rig as well as a brace of 30s as well uh, with only one loss right at the end of the session <clears throat> so the hook holds with this rig have just been the best that you could ever wish for in any rig in all fairness they're always nailed in the bottom lip and um yeah i just think it's one of those rigs where if you're fishing a pressure day ticket water a bit like what we've got here they find it very difficult to get away with now your normal pva bag rig consists of obviously three or four inches of supple braided material and then my choice of hook for this is a size two wide gate beaked now the difference is is you'll notice there that i haven't got your normal standard hair off of the back of the hook which most people trap with a little bit of silicon and then fish a little you know whatever hook bait over the top well i saw joe morgan using this on carp angle and i thought do you know what that is a rig that is a bit of me that for sure i've never been too happy with the pva bag rigs that your standard rigs that you use because i've always had fish fall off on them and when i saw this i thought yeah the hooking properties on that look mega so as you'll see all i've done is basically got a little bit of tube in there now as a grinner knot underneath so i've tied the hook on with a grinner knot from the braided section slid a little bit of shrink tubing over the top steam that off with that little kick in the shrink tube there and then all i've got is a hook bait swivel so what you would normally use on your ronnie rigs or your 360 rigs as such just pop that onto the hook and then bring the bead right the way down so it is sat right next to the eye of the hook so if you imagine that is lying on the bottom of the lake bed like so with the hook lying flat and that hook bait just wafting over the top now when that goes into the fish's mouth you'll see the heaviness of that hook just drops down into the bottom lip and like i say that is the reason why we've been getting such good hook holds now the lead in arrangement on this as well this is an inline drop off system so basically you've got the plug in the bottom there that falls away like so and then the top bit falls away and then obviously that is the lead dropping off on that system so it's just like an inline system that is that's an impact lead there and basically with that lead you know the the rig is actually coming out the center there so they're always feeling the maximum weight of that lead the minute the hook goes into their mouth with that short braided hook link so that's the setup now all i do is put that into a solid bag with the two mil crayfish mini mix pellets middle rods just bleat so it's time to get this rod out onto the spot as well Well, it was the morning after the night before, so to speak, and uh, what a difference a day makes. We got absolutely drenched last night. Um, it hammered it down even more than it did yesterday. Had to get changed again. Um, the, the swim is like an absolute swamp at the minute. It's treacherous. We're slipping about all over the place. Um, but it was another very productive night for me. Ended up with another four fish under my belt. Um, had a couple of low doubles. Had a crack in common that was just under 28 pounds as well. And, uh, and I had another one that was probably sort of low 20, um, which was great. It was pretty difficult for the filming because the rain was just so heavy. Everything was getting absolutely drenched. All our coats and everything had been drying off on the otter fence that's just behind us in, in desperation this morning. We've had a little bit of sunlight, so we've been trying to dry some of our gear out. Um, but I'm now on 10 fish. So talking back on my previous session I'd had here, it was a real red letter session for me, having 16 bites and landing 14 out of here. And I'm now on 10 and I've still got another night to go. So unbelievably, it's looking like I, I may be on form for the same kind of trip again, which is absolutely mental. Um, but yeah, since then, so my last bite was probably around 2.30, maybe 3 a.m. Yeah, boy. 
Um, got the rod back out again. Again, I, I, I'm not really putting more bait out at night. I'm sort of leaving the spot to its own devices and sort of just flicking the rig back out and leaving it there. Um, but since that one, I had some real savage liners, on the, especially on the left hander. And to be honest, I thought it was going to go again at about four and it just didn't. Um, and then after that, it sort of dissipated as first light broke. And since then, nothing. So um, yeah, I'm sort of, I've redone the one on the right hand margin there just to try and freshen it up a little bit. And I'm just going to sit on my hands today now. The fizzing and stuff that we've been seeing over my area in this body of water that I'm fishing has quietened off. So um, I think me just keeping the disturbance to a minimum now is, will hopefully pay off. You know, there's only two of us on this lake and it's like four and a half acres. So there's loads of room for these fish to go. They could be up that end in the snags. They could be down this end under that margin over the, under the overhanging trees. So if I just don't cast out, sit on my hands for a bit, hopefully those fish will move back around again into the middle of the pond and I'll get a couple more bites today. If not, I'm really confident of a couple more tonight. Tree man. Oh no, come out, come away, please. God, he surfaced right underneath the tree. I don't even want to look. Oh, he's fighting all over that tree. Oh. Come on, come away, please. Come on, carp, what are you doing? Oh, man, look at him right under that tree, look. Here we go, he's coming out into the deep water now. Oh, that was airy. That was proper airy, that. Oh, God. He's desperately trying to get underneath that tree, he was. God, and he surfaced right underneath it as well. Ugh. Nice, nice. He's out in the open water now. Thank God. Oh, and breathe. <laughs> so, yeah, not long had this left arm rod out, in all fairness. It was the second rod to actually go out. So he's only been out there, I would say, about 20 minutes. Already walked around this morning and just topped it up a little bit with five spots over the top, big spots, that is. And, uh, you know, we've not had to wait too long for the first bite of the day. Lovely jubbly. Obviously, my tactic of resting the swim at night is working. <laughs> resting the swim, listen to him. Is he still on there? I just saw his back come up and then the back disappeared and now I've got... Oh, don't tell me he's come off. No way. I don't think you see his back come up. Oh, please don't tell me he's come off. No, he's there, isn't he? He's just got that bit of weed over his head. Let's try and gently coax him in. <laughs> Cool. Cool, yeah. He's in. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, he's not a bad one. Oh, lovely jubbly. Maybe, maybe. He's wide across the back, but he's got no length to him. Maybe. Nice one though. Go on a bite! There he is! Come on then, what you had? Well as Vinny would say, 
Steertrap Donkey! <laughs> <laughs> you like the whole act? Yeah, he's a little chunkster, isn't he? Yeah, about right, £30, you know, saying £30 <coughs> oh, Well, there we go. £31, four ounce of blue pool coddling. He would do very nicely, <laughs> wouldn't he? He will, he's a proper old one, isn't he? Proper angry thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely angry, without a doubt. He beasted me, proper. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'd have seen any of it, because I'd be eyes shut for no, most I of it. No, I could see you crying from the other side of the lake. <laughs> it's in the tree! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well landed, mate. No, cheers, idea. mate. Cheers. No, wicked. Buzzing with that. Right, we need to get. I've only got one rod on the spot at the minute, so we need to get them other two out there ASAP. Wicked. <laughs> He's in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> right. Away with you, pig. Thank you for the visit. So this is the PVA bag side of things. All it is is the old rapid system. Pop your, it's not a collar is it? Whatever that is in the top of it. Makes life a lot easier. And then all you do is just a few pellets in the bottom of the bag. About five mil pellets in the bottom there. And then feed your hook bait or rig, should I say, the whole lot down the bottom of the bag and just like to have the hook slightly separated away from the hook bait itself if it does give you ag you can sort of just tap it with the lead use a lead to sort of just push the hook bait away from where the hook is pop that in the top there and then just fill the rest up with pellets so what I do is I cover the hook bait so that you've got about 50 mil of pellets in the bottom I would say and then slide your lead down and have the lead so that it's at the back of the PVA bag there. Just helps it fly a bit better. And then fill the rest up. And just basically cover the lead over like so. Give it a tap, which just compacts the PVA bag a little bit more. And all we'll do is just twist the top like so, lick round and then just push that over the top of your bag, like so. And then that is in done pretty much. All I'll do is just tuck in the corners then, let's pop that off. It is just help it fly a bit true, a bit more true. By licking the corner, push that down, lick the other corner, push that down. It just makes it that little bit more aerodynamic when it's flying through the air. And that is it. Them little solids over the top of that mix and blend that we got out there. Right, rods are all sorted now and this is the mix and blend that I'm going in with. Now, I actually prepared this for a trip that I did last week and I got two buckets prepared. Knowing that I was coming on this trip, I thought I'd have at least one bucket to go in with over here. But... I didn't end up using a lot on that trip so I've actually had two buckets luckily enough so this is what I would like to call my winter mix as such so it's lots of very fine bits of food particles in there it's all sort of based around the S7 got S7 crumb there so I've crumbed up loads of 18 mil S7s got some 12 mil holes in there now I put a few pellets in there as well and we've got crayfish mini mix that's inside here as well. Again, like them real fine pellets, which set off a lovely aroma. And talking about aromas, I've given this a healthy lashing of S7 Hydro Spod Syrup, which has soaked in all of that mix there. It's, you know, you've got a few lumps where it's all sort of clugged together and that will just break down on the bottom of the lake bed. 
and that is what's kept them grubbing around on the zone. So that's my winter mix that I've gone in with that's put me in good stead throughout this trip. After putting back that chunky low 30, I knocked up another PVA bag rig and put it out onto the spot. It wasn't long before the alarm signaled another bite. The left hand rod had registered a good liner, so I went to investigate. As I stood by the rods, the middle one ripped off. In. Oh well, the middle rod has busted off. I actually had a liner on the left hander. Quite a savage liner as well, where I thought maybe the rod's away, where you're fishing sort of locked up and tight. I thought, is that away? Is it not? And the line picked up out of the water and then dropped back. So I walked down to the rods and um, yeah, middle rod went. After a spirited fight, I landed a low 20 mirror. Might not be the 40 pounder we were hoping for, half the size in fact, <laughs> 21 pounds, but a pretty one all the same. I was literally releasing the fish from the sling when the right hander started going as well. That's that bag rod. Oh no. Just like the mirror earlier, this fish fought strongly and made a dash for the fallen tree. No, no, no. I don't even want to look. Not enough. I stood my ground and after a short stalemate, I coaxed him away from the tree. Oh, he's away. This one scrapped like a tiger, wiping the remaining rod out during the fight. It's a lovely dark one. Oh. Get on the salmon sweep. Cool, yeah. He looks all right. We want you. Come on. Come on, you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, lovely jubbly. <laughs> Eventually, I got him into the net and what a carp a stunning 28 pound common to add to the tally. Oh, here we go. Oh, I would say that's probably the best one of the trip for me so far. That is a gorgeous carp. He's proper cool. 28 pounds, might not be the biggest of the trip, but that is my sort of carp, definitely. He is awesome. And uh, yeah, them PBs and all that S7 jazz that we're putting out there is doing the do this trip. I'm absolutely buzzing with that. That's an awesome carp. Well, I've got three rods to sort out because you wiped my last rod out. <laughs> well, we don't mind when you look like that. You are awesome. What a fish. Yes! Oh, look at that. Naughty. Angry God. Right, well, while the activity is relatively quiet on my side of the lake, um, I see Moz has had a couple of bites today, but not an awful lot's happened for me. I have just had a tension with margin rod. Um, but I won't go into that in too much detail, but great opportunity to have a look at the bait that I've been putting out. Now, although I've been putting out relatively small amounts of bait, it's still a mix that I kind of use a fair bit everywhere. I just do a couple of little things in the colder months just to try and up the attraction level, so to speak. So all I've got in here, 15 mil bug, the eight mil bug, I've got some crayfish maximix and some mini mix in there as well. 
and I'm just mixing all that together just to get it all nicely mixed through. And then I'm adding a load of the bug liquid food, dousing loads of it in there. I'll probably use sort of a bucket of that kind of size. I'm probably using the best part of half a litre. Um, so it's real soaked in there. And then what I'll do is drain off the excess after sort of 24 to 48 hours. You'll still get loads of the residue in the bottom of it that hasn't soaked all the way into the bait. The pellets will take on loads of that as well. And then what you'll find with the pellets there is they're so soft, you literally just break them apart in your fingers. Um, now on a trip like this, we're done, I'm going into the third night tonight and you can see there, I've still got probably, probably about a third of a bucket left. So I've not, and the bucket wasn't right to the top at the start of the session anyway, not used tons of bait. And although I wouldn't have a problem putting more in if I felt the need to, I just haven't needed to on this trip. Baiting very little and often, sort of four or five spots after three, three bites or so seems to have been the one. Um, but that's pretty much it. It's a relatively simple mix. Very similar to what I'd use in the spring and summer, but it's just a different element with the liquids and then letting it soak for a few days prior normally helps me a little bit more in them colder months. One of the questions the guys in the office get asked about an awful lot is what bait should I be using in the winter? It's a very valid question, you know, there's a lot of confusion about it, but for me personally, I've got no hesitation of using the bug all year round. Now this is a bait that I've used consistently and exclusively ever since it started being available to test about probably about two, two and a half years ago. Now I had a bit of a chat with the guys in the factory about why the bug is such a consistent and just a generally good bait all through the year as well as the winter months. And they told me that it's all about the solubility and the digestibility of the bait itself. Now it's not really down to the protein levels as the protein levels in a bait basically determine of how little or how much you use in the winter. Now the rule of thumb for that is usually the higher the protein content, the less bait you would usually use and then the lower pro protein content you can normally get away with using a little bit more of the bait in the colder months. A lot of the time you'll find a lot of old school anglers will pull off of the fish mill baits in the colder months. And to be honest, there's not really much of a need for it nowadays. There was back then, but things are different now. And if I wasn't using the bug myself, I would have absolutely no problem at all using the SLK or even the S7 in the colder months before. In fact, before the bug was released, that was what I was using anyway in the winter. Um, a lot of this comes down to high oil contents and stuff is what you usually find in some of those older fish mills that were available back in the day. Um, but those aren't really on the market anymore. So fish mill baits nowadays tend to be a lot more different. So the bug itself is an insect based bait and the guys at DNA use a completely defatted version of the insect protein inside it, meaning the fat content is considerably lower and also because of the protein levels available, it massively increases the digestibility as well as the solubility. Now let's talk about the attraction side of things. Now, this all comes down to the hydroslates in the bait. And the hydroslates in the bug are also very low in fat, meaning that it floods through the water column even in the colder months, no matter how cold that water temperature is. So these hydroslates are in both liquid and powdered forms. And this is what is the real key to why this bait is so effective in the colder months. Well, I'd had a tench earlier down this right hand margin. The fish have been sheeting up on the edge where I've dropped the bait. And I've been saying to Ollie, it's going to go, it's going to go at some point. We're just sitting here, sort of almost waiting for it, sure enough, watching the bubbles. Right hand has just gone and buckled round the second we turned our backs on the rod. And I'm bent into a rather angry carp. Desperately trying to get under them trees. Oh. <laughs> Proper hit and hold stuff this. I'm fishing sort of alongside it. And I, if I, normally what can happen is you could let the fish take a little bit of line and they run alongside it and they go out the back of it. And that's what this fish has done and then it's turned round and it's now trying to get into the snake. So right, I think it's away now. Yeah. It's just on that little PB wafter again. God. Tiniest little amount of bait in the spoon. It's not actually done anything, this rod, for a while. It was quite nice watching them turn up again this afternoon. 
Spirit's trying to go, no, no, I want to know now. <sighs> nah, we're all good. We're good. <sighs> Steady pressure. Still going. There we go. Sweet. Get in there. It's not often you get red letter sessions like this, but um, when you do, you definitely got to make the most of it. 28 and a half pounds. We're losing the life fairly quick and I do want to get that rod back on that margin. So uh, I won't waste too much time. But what a session this is, especially in them colder months. This is a mild winter at the moment and we're still in the early stages, but definitely worth making the most of it. Absolutely brilliant. Lovely colors on him. Okay, well the left hander has busted off. Got him over the, got him away from the tree, got him over the two other rods, and he's now basically up the other end of the lake. He's just gone on an absolute mission. So I am side pumping like you wouldn't believe to try and bring him back round. Always want him to go that way, of course, but this one's gone a bit too far that way at the minute. But what a mental session a pair of us are having. Unbelievable, Ollie's just banked himself a lovely mid-20, I think, over there on the opposite bank. And um, we are having it off at the minute, which is just lovely, you know. Everything's perfect for this trip, you know. The pressure is 993 at the moment, it's moody. It just, it's just one of them trips that feel right. And I haven't really had this sort of in the winter series since like mine and Bart's trip over at Orchid all them many years ago where we were catching multiple carp over there and I think what's helped as well is the fact that there's only me and Ollie on here so you know sometimes that can be your downfall on pressured day ticket waters like this one well it's not really a day ticket it's exclusive and you know most of the time there'll be six seven of you on so there's lines everywhere and that's not been the case this trip. Me and Ollie have been the only two, so there's only six rods in the pond, not 20 odd or whatever that works out to between five or six here. My maths is always rubbish at school. And I think that's, you know, that that's let their guard down a little bit, as I feel, because so we're told the lake hasn't been fishing great. And then we've rocked up and there's only six rods in the water and I think the fish have just been left to their own devices. Not many places on here for them to hide because it's it's not the biggest of lakes. So I feel like all of them, you know, little percentages, not rods being in the water, the perfect weather conditions that we're having at the moment has made us have one of the trips of a lifetime at this time of year, you know, and um, yeah, sometimes everything just falls into place and you can capitalise on it like me and Ollie are at the minute. I'm absolutely loving it. It's great. It's not great for the cameramen, bless them. They haven't slept in three days <laughs> or two nights. <laughs> so, you know, everyone's walking around looking like zombies at the minute. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice that I'm this side of the camera and not that side of the camera it makes a change as the heavens open up. Good luck getting around that one, Ben. <laughs> Get him wet.
Come on, Mr. Carp. Give up now. There he is. Keep coming. Keep him coming. Keep him coming. No, no. You keep coming, son. Lovely. He's in. <laughs> Lovely, jabbly. Nice, nice, nice. 20 pounder. 20 pounder. Oh. Another one bites the S7, you. It's cold and wet and rainy. <gasps> Mate, that is a lovely way to end. Very nicely, wouldn't it? What is or has been a mega, mega trip. Definitely, that. mate. That was just a one fish for me last night, so you can tell that that real low pressure and that I think is ending now, and it that that good spell that we've had and yeah. made the most of. Yeah, you've hit it it's right. Dissipated. Definitely. How definitely. big's that one? Twenty nine pound on the nose. Oh, lovely. So yeah, end of the trip last yesterday evening. I had right on last light at a twenty eight and a half, and then a twenty seven, pretty much at the same time, five <laughs> spots. Then real quiet all night, thought, oh, that's it. Now that's the end of the spell. And then mm. just as we're packing up, loading the barrels, this one turned up. Mega, absolutely mega. Like I say, I think we've hit it right. The pressure's been perfect. The weather's been just mega for it. Definitely, mate. And we've had a mega trick trip off the back of it as well. What has been just amazing, absolutely. I think, yeah, I think now we're, uh, we're ready to have a bit of rest now, I think. <laughs> it's been a bit of a hectic <laughs> one. <laughs> right. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed this first instalment of the winter series, and we'll see you on the next one. 
Lovely job, lady.